No objective football person can watch the Jets Patriots film and come away thinking that one person is at fault. There's just no way. Adam Gase's game plan, it wasn't awful. It wasn't great. What he did was he took Sam Darnold and he may have put too much trust in the kid. But I don't think anyone would have argued doing that coming off the performance he had against the Cowboys. He probably earned that game plan. He put Le'Veon, Le'Veon Bell out wide and made Belichick decide. Are you going to play it safe? Leave the single high safety up top? Or are you going to double down, go cover zero, and blitz the hell out of us? And Belichick said, yeah, I'll double down. And I don't think your weapons could beat us. I don't think your offensive line could block us. And I don't think your young quarterback could beat us. Gase lost, but that is not the most important picture. The most important picture is Gase, the Jets offensive line, the entire New York Jets organization, and especially Sam Darnold were equally horrific in this game. The first interception by Darnold, listen, Gase didn't have a good game. I'd prefer Le'Veon to be in the backfield against a cover zero team, but I mean, this is on Darnold. O-line doesn't get it done, but this is on Darnold. He can't make this play. 11 personnel, 2 for 5 There are the routes. I'd much rather see more rub pick concepts as well. But still, he can get it done here. He knows it's cover zero. And first of all, folks, cover zero, running it more than 5, 8 times a game is insulting to an NFL offense. Three times, four times a game, it's insulting. Obviously, you know what happens. There's the spot Darnold needs to aim for. He's in trouble. He can't really see. Throw it short. Throw it short and towards the sideline. That's what he needs to do. Even if Crowder isn't ready, and you see here, the routes aren't even developed yet by the time he gets there. Free runners are one thing. Experiencing free runners too quickly is another. And that's the difference. That's the difference where the scheme and the O-line failed Darnold. The free runners came way too often, way too quickly. Having said that, Darnold's gotta throw it away here. Can't let this happen. Six guys are potential threats. He knows Griffin's staying in, so he thinks it's six on six. That seventh guy, notice that coaching, Belichick. Look where he puts him. Outside the end, outside the tackle box, he comes in. How Winters doesn't pick him up, I don't know. I don't know the protection call, and the free runner on the left as well. How does he have that straight shot? I don't know. The safety came. If you're going to allow a free runner, you want it to come from the outside. It's a further point to get to the quarterback. The Jets have failed Darnold miserably in this regard this year. Still, Darnold can't throw that pick. One of the most alarming aspects of Darnold's play on Monday night were the mechanics. Just simple fundamentals about the quarterback position. Did he come back too soon? Is he worried about being hit? You see it here to Crowder on third down. Not much to do here. Not many places to go with the ball. With the cover zero blitz. But watch this. He's fine. They pick it up relatively well. He has time. Plant and drive it. No. He goes Michael Jordan. He fades. Doesn't drive the ball, doesn't plant, flailing away, and that was a common theme all game. Not a good sign. Sure, get on Gase, but it's Darnold. Look at this play. I don't know what he's doing. Empty. First of all, the game plan was obvious. Empty was prevalent because Gay said this to Belichick. I'm going to put Le'Veon out wide. You have a decision. 
Are you going to match him up with a linebacker and leave the safety in the mix? Which most teams would do. Which is not the psychopath way of playing defense. Or, are you actually going to double down, put the safety, and leave the middle wide open? Belichick said, your weapons don't scare me. Darnold doesn't scare me. Your offensive line's terrible. I'll put the safety out there, double down on the cover zero, let you know it's coming, and you still can't beat it. And that's what happens. Now, before we go any further, it's important to note this. Pre-snap, there's talk that Darnold wanted a hot read slant with Robbie Anderson. I can't assume that. And as quarterback, you can't. You have to know your weapons. You have to know your receiver's limitations. Do you trust Robbie in an all-out blitz? I would trust Crowder on the out first. So that's something to think about. I can't assume hot route here with Robbie. It's possible, it's probable, but I can't assume it. So Gase tried to force Belichick's hand. Belichick matched him, put the safety out there, and Jets couldn't do anything. Here, the protection was good. The call out was fine. They slid to the left, our right. Darnold, there he is. He sees four on, the, four on his left, three on his right. So the protection's fine. Slide left is the right call. See, three, four. So knowing this, he knows that's gonna be the free runner. If all goes well, that's the free runner. So why is he looking to the free runner side? You want to throw it opposite of the free runner in an ideal world. And he had Crowder open on the out, as you already saw from the other angle. Has to look left first. I don't know why he's not. Look to the non-free runner side first. And if he did, he had Crowder on the out. It's a salary cap league, which means the talent across 32 organizations is relatively close. Pats win by coaching. It's the little things. Another free runner here, Crowder in the backfield. Boom. Not even close. Darnold has no chance. Six man rush against five offensive linemen. With Crowder in the backfield, you know he's not staying in the block. Pats know this, but, but watch this placement by Belichick. It's so intentional. Look at where number 58 is. Outside of the D end. That is crucial when the offensive line and the quarterback are IDing potential risks. He does this. Also, notice his movement. He got a head start. What does that tell you? The cadence is predictable. It's the little things. That start right there. That start, it's crucial. It's huge in football. Little things like that add up. Every play, every down and lead to great teams being great, and that's what Belichick does. It really is incredibly easy to blame Adam Gase, and Adam Gase deserves all the criticism in the world. You win as a team, you lose as a team. That's the bottom line. And just don't fall for that garbage that it's this man's fault or this man's fault. Donald was terrible. Locked onto one read, he's not seen the entire field. I mean, I don't know how anybody who looked at the film can come away thinking otherwise. Drops back. Pats are in chase mode. There's Griffin. If he's seeing the entire field, he's going to know Griffin's going to be open here. And it's probably a walk-in touchdown. There is no chance. See right there, there's nothing there. There's no chance up at the top that that corner could turn on a dime and defend Griffin. There's no chance that underneath defender... Is going to make that play either. If he throws that ball to Griffin with touch, it's a walk in. But watch Darnold here. Motion, Crowder to bunch, gun, locked in. Locked into the right side the entire time. Gets a little hesitant there, airmails it, interception. There are countless examples of Darnold not seeing the entire field, not seeing everything. Locking in on one side or one man and living and dying with that route. It can't happen at this level. It just can't. He was jittery. He wanted to get rid of it quickly. It just can't happen. Here are the routes. He's got two underneath with Robbie doing a corner. Pat's try to disguise it. Start too deep. And right here, Crowder underneath. That's a winning play on second down. 
It's a winning play. The ball should already be in the, in the air at this point. On the break. And the other call out is here. Look at that bracket. The Pats use single high coverage so well. You see Gilmore's positioning towards the sideline so far off the corner because he knows he has help to the inside. So it's really hard to get vertical against the Pats. And that's why Robbie Anderson has no chance when they go single high. But look at Darnold. Looks left the entire time. The entire time. He looks left. It's a three-man rush. He has plenty of time. Doesn't give the right side a chance. He's got to know. If there's nothing there left immediately, find Crowder. The other thing highlighted in a loss like this is the little things. Or the little things. The coaching uh, points that are hit and are within a program that take years to build. And what Belichick has going here is just incredible. It's a wide receiver screen off of play action. What I'd like to see is Darnold and Gase going to the wide receiver screen against a cover zero look. This is not an aggressive look. Single high, four man, four man line, it's not aggressive. But here's the call out. Look at number 55 at the end. Watch his movement. Watch him reading the play. He reads the play and reads the left tackle so brilliantly. And look at Darnold. The play action hasn't even followed through yet. It's just incredible. Incredible read here that helps blow up the screen. Second and 15. Interestingly, the Jets ran the ball well. 4.8 yards per carry, I think, to the Pats 2.2. This is coming off a nice Le'Veon Bell run that got called back for holding. The call, I like the idea. He moves the pocket, play action. I'd rather see something shallow, something over the middle, if you're going to move the pocket. But this works too. Again, it's Darnold predetermining where he's going to go with the ball. He predetermines Robbie Anderson plenty of times. He has plenty all the time in the world. Why does he predetermine Robbie where there's a single high safety? Crowder in the slot has the DB reeling. He wins his route. Why does Darnold predetermine Robbie Anderson against Gilmore, who knows he has inside over the top help? Why does he do that? This it's it, this is the most disturbing common theme of the entire game. All the time in the world. Locks and loads predetermined what he was going to do. This one's a combination of factors, fourth and four. Empty, part of Gase's plan to put Levy in out wide and let Belichick decide what to do. Whether he's going to play it safe and leave a single higher or double down, he doubles down. Cover zero, blitz look. Stop it right here, it's man coverage. It's only a four-man rush. Man coverage. Kind of a green dog spy, plus two more underneath zones. No one over the top. He has Robbie Anderson open and misses him. Right tackle gets completely owned here. Shell. Watch him get pushed back into Darnold. That creates the throw to be off. Uh, whether you want to put this on Darnold or not is up to you. Shell can't get owned like that. Can Darnold still complete that pass? If you ask Darnold, he'll probably say yes. He's got to he's got to get that done. Another missed opportunity. Another interception for Sam Darnold. And once again, protection issues rear its ugly head. Gun trips up top. It's going to be a max protect with Griffin and Bell staying in the block. Again, cover zero look. Now, here are the pattern. Here's the pattern. Here are the reps. Darnold needs to understand DBs, when they have no help over the top, they will let the short stuff go. It's just the way football's played. It's impossible to cover everything. So that out to Crowder has to be the number one priority. At the same time, the free runner is coming from the same side. So it's tough to get on Darnold here. Really tough to get on Darnold. Throws it up. No man's land. Robbie Anderson's not looking. You can't throw that ball. If Robbie Anderson's not looking and the defender, the corner, is playing like a safety position, he's looking, can't throw it up. It's one of those situations where a sack is better than actually getting rid of it. Now here we go. What is wrong with this picture? Bell and Griffin on the same side. Pats have three on the left. 
four on the right, technically three on the right, 53 head up on the center. Bell has to be on the other side. The adjustment has to come where Bell shifts to the other side to balance out the protection. They don't do it. It's just awful preparation. Free runner comes, awful preparation, awful in-game adjusting. Really nothing else you could say other than that. It's just terrible execution from the offense. More protection issues, second and 10 on the 11 yard line. Pats do what they do. They bring pressure. Motion. Le'Veon into the flat. Could have been a big play. Now I use could have because once again, the free runner comes from the wrong spot. You don't want the free runner to have the shortest point from A to B down the A gap. That is a nightmare for a quarterback. Darnold pre-snap knows that man has Le'Veon. So he knows if he blitzes, he really can't blitz because he has Le'Veon in man coverage. That free runner can't be the guy. Can't be the guy. It has to be coming from the edge. And the offensive line needs to get that done. It destroys the entire play. And if they just yield the free runner from the outside, it could have worked. At this point of the game, what this is is just a lack of confidence. He knows what he sees here. 12 personnel, motion, goes to a double tight end look. Single high. Here are the routes. Robbie Anderson nearest to us on the post. Up top, go. Play action. And the play action does its job to a decent degree here. Why Darnold doesn't pull the trigger, I don't know. Five-man rush. Plant. Look at this. He's already thrown picks, going to Robbie. Gilmore's on him, even though Gilmore at this point is just playing as lax as possible. I don't know what Darnold is waiting for here. It's just a lack of confidence. He's in his own head. And the offensive line does a good job. Plant, he's looking right at him. What is he waiting for? The Darnold from the Dallas game would have completed this pass in his sleep. More poor mechanics, more poor decision making on the part of Sam Darnold. Uh, Pats come out. Uh, start too deep, finally get organized, single high press. No, again, disguised press, but heavy pressure look once again. Now, Darnold has two verticals on the outside, and there's only one decision. He sees it's man coverage, there's only one decision. Here, Crowder down the middle of the field, darting towards the sideline. The DB trailing. That is such a hard, compromising decision to be in. When you're in the middle of the field, you don't have the sideline to work with. As a quarterback, you have to understand that route's going to come open. There goes Crowder down the middle of the field. That's his play. Also, look at this. Look at how open his body is. Look at how flailing away, just terrible mechanics. Did he come back too soon? I mean, I know it's the fourth quarter here, eight minutes left, but watch the way he doesn't step up in the pocket and deliver the ball. This is actually a completion too, in the slot, against a blitz, free runner, what else is new? There's the completion on the sit, and you'll get a sense here. Doesn't, it's the mechanics again. Right now, drive. Look at him flailing away, flailing away. Almost like he's afraid to get hit. Is he, should he not be out there? Open stance, flailing away, it's just not good. Just simple quarterback play. I mean, that's fundamentals. Doing the simple stuff, reminding yourself to scan the field, reminding yourself to not stare down receivers. That's what Darnold didn't do. Look at Berrios. He's looking left the entire time. He's looking at the out the entire time. He could probably have it if the timing is right, but it's the lower percentage throw. Look at his head. Left, 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 left the entire time. There's Berrios, wide open. It's second and three, people. He looks left so much that that backer deserts early. Berrios would have had a huge play. The easy thing to do is blame Adam Gase, curse him up, call him awful, terrible, game plans crappy, he doesn't know what the hell he's doing, 
It's the easy thing to do. The hard thing to do is blame him and the young quarterback you love so much, that you have so much hope in. But that's the right thing to do. In the game of football, you win as a team, you lose as a team. And when you lose 33-0 on national TV in such a disgraceful way, more than one man is at fault. That is for damn sure. And if you do the right thing and you realize there are more than one people at fault, improvement can be made. Gase was awful. The Jets were terrible. The offensive line has remained brutal since I don't know how many decades ago. But number 14, young Sam Darnold, was beyond horrific. We'll see how he does in Jacksonville this Sunday.